Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing so well today. Today is a really fun video for me to record because today I'm going to be sharing some book recommendations based off of cozy books. So if you've watched any of my videos, you will probably have picked up that I really love cozy books and cozy reading. By this, I mean books that are heartwarming, books that are comforting, books that help you to escape or to become more aware of the joys of life. A book that is a warm hug, I guess. <laughs> of course, there is a place for reading books where you learn something. Of course, there is a place for challenging yourself in reading. But sometimes you just want a book to give you a warm hug. You just need a book to restore your faith in humanity. And so today's video is all about those kinds of books. I haven't actually done a book recommendations video for quite a while. Um, I think my last one was last year. So um, I feel like it's about time for a book recommendations video. And I did do a cozy book recommendations video around this time last year, I think either January or February last year. And so in the year since that video, I have of course read a lot more cozy books that I want to share with you. So that is the plan for this video. I'm not gonna include any of the books that I mentioned in that last video. So if you do want more book recommendations, go and check that video out. That's more sort of books that I've read over my lifetime. Whereas this is books that I've read in the last couple of years. Also the books in this video are gonna go from kind of cozy to super cozy. They're gonna get cozier as the video goes on. Um, so if you're someone who just wants a little touch of coziness and comfort in their stories, then those books will be at the beginning. And for those of you who just want complete comfort, feels like a hot cup of tea on a rainy day kind of book, that will be at the end. So without further ado, go and grab yourself a comforting cup of tea or coffee, get cozy and let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, so the first book that I want to talk about is Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. And this is on the kind of cozy, like hints of cozy sort of books. In this world, the land has been cursed so that every full moon somebody in the town or villages nightmares will come to life so one nightmare will actually come to life and actually happen on the night of a new moon and so each town and village have a warden whose job is to throughout the month go and record people's dreams and log them all, journal them all, so that on the night of the full moon they are prepared for whichever nightmare occurs and then their job is to fight the nightmare and save the village or town. And so our main character is the daughter of the warden of this particular town and she is sort of his apprentice training to take over one day from her father. However, you can actually steal the wardenship of a town in this world. So if you actually fight the nightmare and defeat the nightmare before the warden, then you get claim over that wardenship, if that makes sense. <laughs> and so this happens at the beginning of the story within the first couple of chapters. And as a result, our main character and her father are uprooted from their home and from their life and they have to move somewhere new. And our main character is not happy and decides to enact her revenge by applying to be the apprentice warden for the person who stole their wardenship, his brother. That doesn't, I don't know why my brain is explaining things so badly today. Basically she enacts revenge by seeping her way into his family and trying to um, steal back the wardenship. And so it's just a really, it doesn't sound super cozy in the sense of nightmares are plaguing the land, but it's just cozy in the sense of the setting and the world and particularly the idea of a dream world that comes to life. Um, I just really enjoyed this book. It was one of those ones that I opened up on a day where I was feeling a bit sad and didn't want to leave the book alone for a minute. I was so engrossed in this world and in this story and I think this is the perfect kind of book for when you want a day when nobody bothers you and you just want to get lost in a new world. 
So Dreams Lie Beneath by Rebecca Ross. We then have 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf, which is a collection of letters from, real letters from a lady who lived in New York, I believe. And she is writing a letter to this antique secondhand bookshop in London because she's trying to find a particular copy of a book and she can't find it anywhere. And so she writes a letter to this bookshop and one of the booksellers in this bookshop writes back to her. And so begins about 20 or 30 years worth of letters between these two people. If you love books, if you love bookshops, if you love finding secondhand books, um, you'll find this book so heartwarming. The way that the love of reading is described just filled me with so much joy and reminded me of how much I love reading and made me feel inspired to pick up new books and try new sort of stories. And I just think this is the perfect kind of book to read when you want to remind yourself of the joy of reading. It gives me a similar kind of feel to You've Got Mail, except it's set from the 1950s, I think it begins in the letters, the 1940s to 50s. So it's kind of a real life, old school, You've Got Mail. And it's just so charming. Really recommend this book for all book lovers. The next book I have here is actually a book that I have just finished, and that is Persuasion by Jane Austen. Um, this particular cover got a bit damaged. I think I dropped like a splash of water on this cover and then next thing I knew, all of this paint had come off. I love these penguin cloth bandages, but I do find that they don't last very well when you actually read them. They're more sort of pretty to decorate with, but then when you actually open the book, the paint comes off. I, like It's literally coming off on my hands now. Um, so that's really annoying. I don't know if I just got a bit of a dodgy copy of it maybe, but other than the cover, the book itself. We follow 27 year old Anne Elliot, 27 being quite old on the end of Jane Austen's main characters. I believe most of them are a lot younger than that. And she has in her past been persuaded not to marry the man that she loved, Captain Wentworth, because he had no money, no position, no prospects. And she was persuaded by her godmother um, to not marry this man. And her whole life she has been plagued by regret and remorse for listening to the opinions of this woman and not going with her heart. And as a result, she has never pursued another romantic relationship and she has been single. And so we follow Anne as her father has to decide to rent out their house because they're struggling for money. And they end up renting the house out to some people who are very close friends with Captain Wentworth. And as a result, Anne and her former true love end up crossing paths again. And so we follow Anne as she um, comes back face to face with the man that she loved and deals with all of those emotions and the feelings that she still has for him. A lot of this book is set by the seaside in Lyme Regis, I think. And I think this setting adds to the coziness for me of walks along the cliffs and walks along the beach. I just think the, the setting of it feels so lovely and immersive in a way. I also just find books like this where it's a lot of day-to-day -day life kind of like a slice of life type story to be very cozy because it's not like something big and dramatic happens. It's not thrilling or having you on the edge of your seat. It just unfolds gently and in a lovely way. Probably all of Jane Austen's books have a similar kind of feel in that sense, but I've only read Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion so far, so I can't comment on the rest, but I get the feeling that they're all very similar in that way. The next book we have here is Stardust by Neil Gaiman, which is one of, maybe this isn't seasonally appropriate because I definitely feel like this is a book for the autumn, for an October night. But 
I wanted to put this book in here anyway because it is so cosy. If you've watched the film before you probably know the story and the book follows the film or the film follows the book plotline pretty closely and in this story we follow a young man named Tristan and he has lived his whole life on in the town of Wall and in this town there is a wall funnily enough and on the other side of this wall live lives a magical world full of other creatures. Tristan is in love with a young woman named Victoria and in a bid to win her heart he tells her that he is going to go and get her the falling star that they have just seen come out of the sky and this takes him out of the village of Wall and into this new realm. And we just follow him on his adventures and on his journey. And it's just one of those books that's so fun and enjoyable to read. I think you can just sit down and read it in one go. And also you compare it with the movie, which is very, very cozy to me. It's one of those fantasies where it feels like it's more about the adventure. Like even though dramatic things happen, it's never kind of written in a edge of your seat kind of way. It just sort of unfolds and carries you along for the ride. And it feels very childlike and whimsical to read. So I would really recommend this one. And then in a similar vein, we have Castle in the Air by Diana Wynne-Jones. So in the last Cozy Books recommendation video that I did, I recommended Howl's Moving Castle, but I've recommended that book in so many videos, so I feel like I just can't recommend that again for a few years. Um, but Castle in the Air is the sequel, kind of, to Howl's Moving Castle. I say kind of because it doesn't follow directly on from the story and we follow a new set of characters, but some of the characters in that first book do reappear. This is a book for cosy summer nights outside whilst the sun is still setting in my opinion. We follow a young merchant named Abdullah and his life changes when one day a merchant sells him a magic carpet and this story is very inspired by um, Tales of the Arabian Nights and Aladdin and that sort of storyline but then it takes a few little twists as it goes on. This magic carpet brings him to this magical nighttime flower garden and he falls in love with the girl who lives in this flower garden. However, this girl gets stolen by a genie, by an evil genie, and he has to go on an adventure to find her and rescue her. And this is a children's story, so it's kind of very similar to Stardust in that it feels just like an adventure. It's just a whimsical childlike adventure that even though there's dramas, it just never feels too high pressured, you know? I am a firm believer that adults should and can enjoy children's stories if they're good children's stories and actually can get a lot more out of them than you can as a child. I find that with really good classic children's stories, I can get so much from them and learn so much from um, the messages that they convey. And so I think Diana Wynne Jones' stories that I've read so far are very much that for me. They are just really poignant and powerful stories, but told through a childlike adventure. And there's one more book in this series called, what's it called? House of Many Ways. And I think that's the final book in this kind of trilogy of books that link together and so this is another good one if you want a whole series to read through in a weekend or something because they're even though they're big the font is very big as well so it gets you get through them really quickly okay so now in my opinion we're getting to the cozy cozy kind of books and actually no i won't go for this one first the city baker's guide to country living by louise miller don't let the cover fool you in the Christmassiness of it because it's set around the end of summer into autumn into winter. So even though the cover looks very Christmassy here, it's not just a Christmas book, even though 
part of the story just take place over Christmas. In this book, we follow a pastry chef named Liv, Olivia, and she has got herself into a bit of a pickle and she can't stay working or living where she was. And so she goes to crash with a friend in this small town in um, Vermont. And while she's there, she ends up kind of accidentally getting herself a job as a pastry chef in a little inn called the, I think it was like the Sugar Maple. Yeah, the Sugar Maple Inn. And it's just very charming. It's about her life as she adapts to small town life after living in a big city um, and moving from this big high flying chef to the chef of a little inn. And it's about living quietly and living slowly and appreciating people and the world around you and it's romantic it reads very much like a hallmark christmas movie or just a very romantic story like a cheesy rom-com we have apple pie baking contests and so many descriptions of cakes and puddings and it will make you hungry this book but it just, it's so lovely and charming and heartwarming and cozy. The next book I have here is one that I personally didn't love. Like I liked it, it was kind of average for me, but I think that other people would enjoy it more. So I'm gonna recommend it in this video anyway, in case this is something that's more, um, more, what's the expression? Up your alley. My brain is at working today. This is Daisies for Innocence by Bailey Cottrell and it's a cozy murder mystery, which I'm gonna be recommending one more book within that kind of genre as well. And in this story, we follow Ellie and Ellie owns a kind of perfume type shop. I think she sells soaps and that sort of thing. And this particular shop is very cozy because out the back of the shop, she has this enchanted garden where there are all the flowers and all of the plants that she uses in her products. So people get to go out into the garden and smell all of the aromas and then decide on which product to buy. And whilst they get to peruse throughout the gardens, they get home baked cookies and it's all just very, lovely very idealistic however not as all as it seems in this cozy small town because one day her assistant Josie who also happens to be dating Ellie's ex-husband ends up dead in the enchanted garden and of course Ellie is a prime suspect and so she decides to take it upon herself to try and solve the murder and acquit herself of any blame. What I didn't like about this story was that the plot never felt realistic. I, For me, if a book doesn't feel realistic, if the actions don't feel like they would actually happen in some way, I really struggle with a book. However, if that doesn't bother you, then I think this is a really, really good story. Again, it is like a cheesy romance movie at times and it's got a bit of everything, romance, friendship, murder, you know, all the usual stuff <laughs> in a cozy murder mystery. I think for me, the highlight of this story was the setting. We spend quite a lot of time in this shop and in the enchanted garden and in Ellie's little cabin in the garden that she lives in and it's just yeah it's just a nice escapist kind of book um but just be warned that the story itself is very unrealistic so only go into it if you don't really mind about that we then have a sky painted gold by Laura Wood which is such a lovely story. In the story we follow Lou who is a young woman living in Cornwall and in this place in particular, I can't actually remember where in Cornwall she lives but in this particular place there is a grand house and Lou often spends her free time sneaking into this house and 
reading the books that are in the library. She particularly loves reading Agatha Christie novels and writing her own mystery stories. However, the people who own this house end up coming back to live in it for the summer. And as a result, Lou ends up getting kind of entangled in their family life and dramas. And in particular, she ends up becoming entangled in the life of the very handsome Robert. This book is set in the 1920s as well, which adds to the kind of glamour of the story. Um, it also reminds me, the romance in the story reminds me a lot of Gilmore Girls um, and very much the romance between Rory and Logan feels like a very similar kind of feel in this book. I feel like I always pitch this book in videos as Gilmore Girls meets The Great Gatsby set in Cornwall. And the final book in this video should be no surprise to you, but I also had to recommend the coziest of cozy murder mysteries, which is Shady Hollow by Janu Black. So this is a cozy murder mystery set in a woodland community. So all of the characters are animals, except they do things that humans would do. So they have a bookshop run by a raven and a reporter who is a fox and a moose who runs a coffee shop that sort of thing. This is also a trilogy. There are three books in this world and we particularly follow Vera, who is the fox, who is a reporter, as she is reporting on a murder that has happened in this otherwise very cosy and uneventful town. And in this first book in particular, we have a toad who gets murdered and nothing like this has ever happened to the people of this town. And so it causes quite a stir. What I also love about this book is you get a map at the front of all the different places. You get a cast of characters in the beginning, which I did a um, reading vlog whilst reading this book and I described it as kind of like if you go to a murder mystery night and you get the list of all the characters and a little hint about why they might be the suspect and i just really enjoyed that i thought it was really unique and creative and definitely a story to get lost in on an afternoon please let me know your cozy book recommendations there are obviously more that i could have included in this video but i wanted to keep it to 10 so that i have books for another cozy book recommendations video in another year's time i feel i feel like i should make this a yearly video um so yeah let me know which cozy books are your favorites um, because I'm always looking for new recommendations of books to read on a cozy rainy day where I just want to have my faith restored in humanity. <laughs> if you like this video and would like more cozy videos about books, I post reading vlogs and book recommendation videos every week. So please do consider subscribing if you are interested. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a wonderful day wherever you are in this world and I will see you very soon in the next video.